I'd like to share with you 10 tips that can help you start off this school year so you can crush it or really, if you want, just get by. If you are new here, my name is Himmel. I graduated from Melbourne University a couple of years ago and now I speak across Australia and I make videos on the internet. I make videos on lifestyle, personal development, mental health and productivity. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you hit subscribe. But other than that, let's get on with it. We know what it's like to start off the school year with a lot of motivation and hopes to do well. But as the days, weeks and months go by, we find that motivation is starting to wane, then our effort goes down the drain. We find all the things that we have to do just end up piling up and our will to stay organized just goes out the window until we are left doing the best that we can last minute. Sometimes we can just end up losing motivation completely and then we just settle for whatever. I'm hoping that there'll be something in these 10 tips that can really help you out so that you can apply it and get off to a really good start to the school year and hopefully do really, really well, not only just for the term or the semester, but for the whole year as well. First one is, and I cannot emphasize this one enough, is to set clear goals. A study found that if you vividly described your goals and wrote it down, you have a 20 to 40% higher chance of actually achieving it. That's pretty huge considering all you have to do is just write down your goals. So I encourage you to set clear goals and make sure you write them down. If you want a deeper dive into a really good way that you can set your goals this year, have a look at this video right there. Two, utilize a weighted pen. This may sound like a really weird tip, but I'm gonna need you to hear me out. If you dance like you've got two left feet, that's okay unless you're taking dance as a subject. But if you write like you've got two left hands, then we're gonna have a little bit of a problem. That is unless you're a lefty, which means that you won't have any problem. But basically, you need to make sure that you have good handwriting. That too, and if you're someone that struggles to write for really long periods of time, then you're probably also going to suffer. I also had really shocking handwriting when I was in high school. It was especially bad when it was like halfway into a test or like an English essay. It was just getting worse and worse every minute. It was like as if I had like a tendon missing or I didn't get my pen license in grade four. Maybe that's why they maybe that's why they didn't give it to me. Anyway, a friend of mine suggested that you tape a AAA battery to the end of your pen so that it would increase the weight of the pen so that when you write, that it would fatigue your hand faster. What it's actually doing is supposedly training the finer muscles in your hand and in your wrist so that by the time when you take it off for the actual test or the exam, when you take it off, your handwriting is a lot more flowy, it's a lot more legible and you can write for longer. And then as you go on, and as your wrist and hand get stronger, you can actually start increasing the weight, take more AAA batteries to the end of the pen. And hopefully by the end of the year, you can write multiple exams or multiple essays without any problems at all. And that's something that actually worked really well for me. I only started doing it at the start of year 11. And at that point we had two more years of school left. So by the time I was finished with year 12, I was actually doing all right. Like my handwriting was legible. Examiners could actually read my handwriting and I got decent marks. Number three. Organize yourself effectively. Use the school planner that you got at the start of the year. If you don't have one or you don't like it, grab one from a stationery store, grab one from Officeworks, or if you want to be extra, grab one from Kiki K. Or you could just use an app on your phone like Google Calendar. Use these different tools to make sure that you are organized throughout the year. It's really important that you schedule really important dates like exams, due dates for assignments, and so on so you don't get surprised randomly throughout the term. If you organize yourself effectively enough, then you'll be reducing a lot of stress. Number four, use a checklist. This will stop you from forgetting things, but it also means that you're not storing too much information up here. Storing information up here, especially when you don't need to, is completely unnecessary. It's stressful and there's also a chance that you just might forget something. So chuck whatever it is that you need to do on a to-do list. Use a physical one if you like physically writing down stuff or use the one on your phone. Use Todoist, there's Tick Tick. There's so many different ones out there for you to use. So please just pick one so you can write down whatever it is that you need to. And then hopefully this helps you stay on task during the day as well. This will help clear out your mind because you're less stressed as well. It means that more meaningful information can take place up here. Number five, create a good study location. This is one of the best ways to create really good study habits. I don't know about you, but if my room's a bit of a mess or my study's a little bit of a mess, then I tend to be a bit of a mess as well. One study actually found that if your room or like your area has a lot of stuff in it, in other words, it's really messy, then there's a really good chance that then you're gonna end up procrastinating. So I'd highly recommend cleaning up that area wherever you do your work, like reduce all the clutter and just make sure it's like a really minimalist approach so that you only have the things on your table that are necessary. And when you have this, hopefully your mind's a lot more clearer so you can stay focused, get distracted less and get more work done. On to the next one, discipline is key. 
Work hard and stay organized even when you don't want to be. Focus on trying to cultivate this quality of being disciplined. If you can learn to do this, then it'll definitely pay off in the long run. When you have discipline, you don't need to be motivated to get study done because it's inbuilt as part of your character. You'll get it done anyway. And honestly, sometimes you're just gonna have to do what you don't wanna do in order to get where you wanna be. Number seven, this is super important. You need to make sure that you look after your mental health. Now more than ever, this is getting increasingly important and there's so many ways that you can look after your mental health. You could run, you can do a bit of exercise, you can meditate, you can introspect, you can hang out with people that uplift your spirits. All these things can really help with your mental health. If you are someone that has been struggling for quite some time now, then I do recommend that you do seek some professional help. I know there's a there's like a thing where, you know, my problems are my problems, so I'm gonna sort out myself. But there is strength in asking for help, and there's nothing wrong with that. So if you are someone that has been struggling for quite a while, then I do recommend seeking some help. I did, and I'm so glad I did. Like I tried to figure it out on my own for like three, four, five years. And basically after then I was so sick and tired of feeling the way I felt. I finally sought help and I started feeling so much better within four to six months of um, getting some help from like psychs and counselors and all that. So see, just see what works for you. Number eight, find out what time of the day that you work best at. Are you a morning, afternoon, or night person? When I was in high school, I used to be really effective at night. I used to be really, really productive at night. So find out whenever, what, what, what time of the day works really well for you, where you feel like you are the most efficient, where you have the most energy, and you are the most productive. Those things are really important. And then work around that. But then also make sure that you're getting enough sleep. So don't go overboard. If you're someone that works really effectively at night, don't forget to take naps during the day after school when you get home. Just make sure that you are effective and you're getting enough sleep, which is is the ninth point. Bro, you can't be watching Netflix, YouTube, anime until like 3, 4 a.m. in the morning anymore. Unless you're watching my videos, which is cool. No, I'm kidding, don't. Don't even sacrifice that for your sleep. You need to make sure that you get enough sleep. There's been tons of research done now. There's so many books out there now that has linked sleep to poor memory storage and recall. So it's affecting your hippocampus. It affects your amygdala, which is the emotional control center of your brain. So that if you're sleep deprived, you end up being triggered more often. Your emotions end up going all over the place. So your mental health issues get affected as well. It also means that you know, you're a lot more irritable during the day. It also means that you know, your immunity levels go down too. So please make sure that you get enough sleep I cannot emphasize this enough I remember when I was in year 11 no, actually yeah no it, it was in year 12 in my, in my final year of high school I used to rock up to all my assessments on my three four hours worth of sleep because I would always be studying last minute until 2 3 a.m. the night before before I'd had the test the next morning and so my teacher actually told me, hey, it doesn't even matter if you haven't covered everything that you needed to for this particular test. Don't worry about it, ignore it. Just make sure that you try and get a full eight hours of sleep the night before. And once I did that, by the time I got to the test the next morning, I ended up being a lot more confident. I almost felt like, you know, I had a lot more energy. I felt like ideas ended up flowing through my head a lot quicker. And I could write a lot better too. When I was doing all these tests and everything when I was sleep deprived, it was like fighting with myself to stay awake whilst also trying to recall information from the study that I did the night before and trying to put it on paper. It's just way too difficult. So if you're someone that's very used to being sleep deprived and doing your exams and everything, then try getting a full night's rest the night before. So the stats are teenagers, you're gonna need just above nine hours of sleep a night. I know it seems crazy, but that's what you need. If you're in university, then I think it is like at least eight if you can get a little bit more then that's still good and I know you may be thinking like especially if you're in the later years how on earth are you gonna get like over nine hours of sleep a night somehow you just got to factor it in and I'd highly recommend trying get try and getting as close to that number as you can one thing that's worked really well for me in terms of getting sleep is just making sure that I don't use my electrical devices within an hour of getting into bed because yes although we have like blue lens light filters on our like glasses and everything but it's like Got like blue light filters on it but like even even though we got blue light filters on these things we've got um, a blue light filter on like our devices it doesn't mean that you're not getting hit with stimuli still when you're getting hit with stimuli from notifications from snapchat facebook instagram maybe you're not getting any dms because you're going to be single the rest of your life i'm kidding when you're getting hit with like a whole bunch of notifications what happens is is that your brain's activity just keeps going up or, or it keeps being highly active and then if you want to go to sleep right after that, 
then there's a good chance that as soon as your head hits the pillow, a million thoughts are just gonna flood your mind. So make sure that you turn off your electrical devices within an hour of getting into bed. So by the time you know, you're in bed and your head hits the pillow, your thoughts are not all over the place, right? You're not, your brain's not highly super active. So give that a shot, maybe even read a book. I know that calms a lot of people down. Even meditation can reduce the number of thoughts that are in your mind so you can fall asleep a lot faster. So try giving that a shot and see if that works for you. And number 10, remember why. Make sure you have a compelling reason why you're doing what you're doing. When you have a really strong reason why, whether it be you know out of gratitude, whether you want to live a certain lifestyle, or whether you just want to get out of high school so you can finish it off as quick as you can with the least amount of stress possible. Whatever your reason why is, if you have a really strong connection to it, then action will automatically follow. You'll find yourself putting in the work even when you don't feel like, and then you want to be successful as well. For me, it was like, I wanted to kind of make the most of my school life in Australia. And then also I wanted to live, you know, a happier, meaningful and productive life. And so for me, that meant doing really well in my academics, doing really well in my sport, doing really well when it comes to leadership and everything in that aspect. So I just basically just wanted to crush school. And when I connected with that, it meant for me that, you know, hey bro, you can't watch you know Netflix until 2 a.m. Right? You can't keep going out every Friday and Saturday night just because there's an 18th every single time, right? You've got four, five tests the next week, bro. You can't be doing that. And when you, when you connect really strongly with your why, then you'll happily give up all the lower priorities in your life for the pursuit of higher priorities and things that are more important to you. So remember your why. If you found this video brought a lot of value to you, please make sure you do like it, you subscribe to the channel, share it with a friend in your year level that you think might benefit from it as well. Good luck for the rest of the term and the semester. And I hope you achieve whatever it is that you set out to do. And I guess I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Bye.